1924 New York Chess Tournament. Round 5. Czech chess player Richard Reti faces the reigning world chess champion Jose Raul Capablanca. Capablanca seems as though he hasn't a care in the world. Why should he? He hasn't lost a game in 8 years. He may not be winning this tournament, but it appears that he's content to keep his unbeaten streak intact. Reti uncaps the pen and fills out his score sheet. The players shake hands and Reti looks at the board for a moment before grasping the g1 knight. Knight f3. Savelli Tartakover called knight f3 the Reti Zucker tort opening and set. An opening of the past which became towards 1923 the opening of the future. 1923. Richard Reti introduces an amazing new setup with double fianchetto and in just 19 moves gets a winning position without having a pawn beyond the third rank. In that same year, he beat Rubinstein and Tartakover, but his biggest triumph came in 1924 at the famous New York tournament, beating the reigning world chess champion Jose Raul Capablanca, the ex-world chess champion Emmanuel Lasker, and the future world chess champion Alexander Alyokhin. After that, no one would dispute the name of the newborn opening system. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video we are going to cover that famous historical game played between Reti and Capablanca where Capablanca suffers a loss for the first time in 8 years. To White's knight f3 Capablanca answered with knight f6. By the way, I have to tell you that the pure Reti arises when to white's knight f3, black answers with d5, and then white plays c4. But in our game after knight f3, we see knight f6, and after c4, Capablanca answered with g6. This is the Reti King's Indian. And a very interesting move by Reti b4. With this move, he's going for an exaggerated fianchetto. White gains space on the queen side and his bishop on b2 will neutralize black's bishop on g7. Interestingly, I have to tell you that it was Aron Nimtsovich who first introduced this b4 move a year earlier in 1923 when playing against Reti and this time Reti acquires Nimtsovich's idea. Meanwhile, in our game we have bishop g7, bishop b2, black castled king side g3, b6. In his book, New York 1924, Alokhin writes, Capablanca treats the opening simply as well as soundly and after a few moves obtains a perfectly even position. I have to tell you that the upcoming comments provided by Alokhin are also taken from that book. Meanwhile, we have bishop g2, bishop b7, white castled kingside, d6, d3, knight bd7, knight bd2, e5. Later, black should always take into consideration knight e5 possibilities, but right now it's not working. Queen c2, rook e8, rook d1. In view of lines starting with knight takes e5, it's good to have the rook moved from f1 and later the rook can support the advance of the d-pawn. And a5 by Capablanca, with which he's undermining the pawn on b4, which stepped too far on move 3. a3 and h6. Alokhin writes, This move, which is difficult to understand, is the best proof that Capablanca was poorly disposed that day. Knight f1 by Reti, and already knight takes e5 is the threat, because with his last move, white freed the second rank for the queen, thus strengthening the pawn on e2. I want you to understand the difference. For example, if you go for knight takes e5 straight away, then after bishop takes g2, knight takes d7, queen takes d7, king takes g2, black has this rook takes e2 move. That's why after h6 we have knight f1 and already rook takes e2 won't work. That's why in return Capablanca played c5. Alokhin writes, a clever positional trap, quite in the champion's style. Its only disadvantage lies in the fact that white needs not meddle with it at all. b5, as Alokhin writes, 
Rarity rightly declines the creation gift. For example, if you go for knight takes e5 right now, then in the end of the day, after several exchanges, queen takes d7, king takes g2, the pawn on b4 hands and black can go for a takes b4. That's why in our game after c5, we have b5, knight f8 and e3. This is a move which leads to complications as I look in right after playing e4 and then knight e3, knight d5. White could easily achieve a draw, but we have a fighting e3 move. Queen c7, and there it goes, d4 is on the board. Bishop e4, queen c3. Not a happily chosen spot since black can open the diagonal of the bishop on g7. Better would have been queen c1, but in our game we have queen c3. It takes d4, it takes d4, and knight d7. An inaccuracy by Capablanca, playing knight e6 is better. If d takes c5, then d takes c5. But in our game, after e takes d4, we have knight d7. As Aliochin writes in his book, this is a miscalculation. Capablanca probably overlooked the check of the queen on the 22nd move, by means of which white protects his b-pawn, otherwise he would undoubtedly have selected the simple move of knight e6. But now let's proceed with our game and see the 22nd move made by Reti. So in here we have queen d2, c takes d4, bishop takes d4, and queen takes c4. Well, even in here at least it was better to play a move like knight f6, rejecting the offer of exchange of dark squared bishop, although black has a huge weakness on d6. But in our game we have queen takes c4, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and queen b2 check. And this is that Tsevishan Tsuk about which Alochin was speaking. With this check, white is protecting the pawn on b5, and now will munch the pawn on d6. King g8, and rook takes d6. Queen c5, rook d1, rook a7. Uh, seems like that this is an awkward square for black rook. Is that it was better to play rook c8 if knight e3 then queen c3. The reason that Capablanca played rook a7 quite possibly relies on the fact that he was afraid of rook takes d7. But the thing is that after rook c8, if you go for rook d7, then after the exchange, black has a move like queen f5. Yeah. And then if rook d6, then bishop takes f3 with equal chances. And now if here, then bishop takes g2 will follow. And yeah, from afar this looks to be a complex line. And then bishop h3. A crazy line suggested by Stockfish. Now black wants to make a move like rook e1. That's why white goes for rook takes f7. Yeah, and then queen d2 with equal chances. But of course, seeing this from afar is extremely difficult. In our game we have rook a7 and knight e3. Despite the fact that right now white stands much better, but if Capablanca could make a move like rook c7, then he could prolong his resistance. But in here he made a terrible move playing queen h5. And the problem with this move is that Reti could instantly trap it by playing rook d5. If bishop takes d5, then g4. If bishop takes f3, then g takes h5. And yeah, white is winning, despite the fact that black got a knight and a rook against white queen, but black's position is hopeless. But instead, in our game after queen h5, instead of using his chance playing rook d5, Reti played knight d4 offering the exchange of light squared bishops, queen e5. Well, in here, going for complications and making an exchange sacrifice is better. By the way, right now, queen takes d1 is not good because of this knight f5 move and black is losing. That's why black should play knight e5. And then after queen e2, 
Black can go for the exchange of queens and try his luck in the endgame. But instead, in our game after king takes g2, we have queen e5, knight c4, queen c5, attacking the knight, and white is counterattacking black rook. Rook c7, and already the knight is hanging, we have knight e3. In here, of course, black could make a move like rook takes e3, but Capablanca played knight e5, and after rook d5, he resigned. This was white sealed move, but black resigned without resuming play, since Knight c4 can step into rook takes c5, and then knight d5 is coming. Yeah, and the endgame is hopeless for black. Knight takes a5, this b pawn is marching forward, and white is winning. That's why, as I've already mentioned, after rook d5, we have a resignation. Ratty has won. Capablanca tips his king, then sits silently for a moment, staring blankly at the board. Then he looks up at Reti, smiles broadly and warmly shakes Reti's hand in both of his. The other masters are leaving their own games to rush over to the table where Capablanca and Reti are seated. All of the masters congratulate Reti on his accomplishment. He is the first man to beat Capablanca in the last eight years. Alohin is the only player not to congratulate Reti. A few rounds later, Red is going to accomplish this feat in the same number of moves and with the same final rook d5 move when facing Alohin. Capablanca, meanwhile, has taken advantage of the attention paid to Reti to make good his own escape. He and his female companion have left the hall unnoticed. Reti receives congratulations with his customary humility. He signs his score sheet, picks up his briefcase and stands up. Well, this is it, dear chess lovers. I hope that you enjoyed this famous historical game where the third world chess champion Jose Raul Capablanca suffered a loss for the first time in eight years. I have to tell you that making this video took me way longer than usual because I picked up a lot of information from various sources, so I will be much appreciated if you can spread it by sharing with your friends. I will see you in my next video. Take care.